Good morning everybody. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you are a regular viewer, well, welcome back. Finally, I am getting round to doing a little video tour of my caravan. I have been saying for some time I'm going to do this video, but what's been putting me off is I wanted to have the caravan a couple of months, get the use out of it, because at least then I can do a more realistic review on whether this caravan is the right caravan for when I go full-time caravan living. Now, if this is the first video you've watched of mine, I am not currently full-time caravan living. However, I do plan to in the next year or two. So just over two months ago, I went looking, um, not with the, not with the view to buy a new caravan just yet. I did already have a caravan on a seasonal pitch in North Wales, but it was a 25 year old van. I've had it for seven years. Absolutely love the caravan for holidaying in. However, I was very aware that when it comes to full time caravan living, it probably wasn't the most ideal of vans. Back in its day, it would have been a top of the range caravan. However, in 25 years, obviously things have changed. Um, we all have different needs and it just probably wasn't up to the job. I have to confess, I probably would have done it for a year or two and kind of put up with the the little issues they had but an opportunity came about for me to get a newer van um, so I did kind of just go looking but fell in love with this particular design and worried that next year when it came to me buying a caravan if I didn't find this layout this design I probably would have been quite gutted that I didn't buy the caravan sooner, hence why I've got it a little bit earlier than I originally planned. So the caravan itself is a Swift Elegance 645. Um, it's a four berth caravan. However, what I am going to say is personally, I think it is an adult's grown up caravan, not a family caravan. I know people out there are probably using it as a family caravan, but my own personal view of having lots of caravans over the years is this particular layout would never have worked for me when I was holidaying with my with my two girls because it has an end bathroom an island a transverse island bed which means if two people are sleeping in the front area here <coughs> excuse me you have got to go through the bedroom area to get to the bathroom. And anyone knows with little children who are up and down all night, they would constantly be back and forward <laughs> through your bedroom, no doubt ending up just jumping in bed with you. So for me personally, it wouldn't have worked. But now, because I have grown up children who do not wish to do the full time caravan life with me, it is absolutely ideal just for me and my dog and my rabbit. I'll show you the, the layout of the van shortly, but what I am going to just say is a few points for me that were quite important looking for a new van were A, it had to have a good heating system. Now, my old van originally would have had heating, but was taken out by, by one of the previous owners. So I relied purely on an oil filled radiator and a little fan heater. And whilst they were very good for getting heat into the van, because the caravan was an old caravan with poor insulation, because caravans back then weren't really made for using over winter, because back 25 years ago, you very rarely went away in your caravan over winter like you do now. So it lost all the heat immediately. Now, this new caravan has got a very good heating system. So it's got the Aldi wet heating system, which basically I've been told because it was all new to me. It's just like your central heating system at home. It's a wet system. So 
it just pumps the hot water through the, the heating system. So there's none of the dryness that you get when it's the blow system. So I have a, um, I say a radiator, they don't look like radiators. So, so there's one under each of the front seats in the lounge area. There's two in the bedroom area, one behind the bed and one against the wall under the window. And there is also a heated towel rail in the bathroom and it also has underfloor heating. So as you can imagine, it gets very warm very quickly. And because it's a newer caravan, it's well insulated and it maintains the heat. So you haven't got to have your heating on all the time, which was important to me. I can run that either off um, the hookup electric system or I can run it off my gas. I was originally running up off the electric, the hookup. However, because the seasonal pitch I'm on, we are metered. And unfortunately, at the moment, the owners have got tied into a high tariff. So we're actually paying about 62 pence a unit. So as you can imagine, to have a heating system on was working out quite expensive. And I think in five days of me being at the caravan, I used about £35 worth of electric. So I was like, I need to switch to gas. And to be honest, gas is so much better and it heats up a lot quicker and it's also getting a lot hotter. So I'm running it off the gas from now on. Now, if I was to take the caravan off the site over the winter, which I think I'm intending on doing and then using it four months as a tourer, if I'm on a site where the electric is included in the cost of the, the pitch, I will probably switch back to the electric then. But for the time being of on my seasonal pitch, it's going to be run off the gas. So yeah, heating system was so important to me. So that one has got a big tick. The next thing that was important was I needed plenty of storage because obviously if you're living in your caravan full time, you do have all your possessions with you pretty much unless you put a lot into storage but your general day-to-day -day possessions you still need to be able to accommodate all of those so that this caravan has got ample storage and then also when I'm on my seasonal pitch I do have a big awning up as well so I've got all the storage in there as well so storage issues are definitely ticked in this van um the next one was i wanted a good kitchen area because i do like my cooking i do like my baking so i needed to have good facilities for that so i have a decent size fridge freezer i've also got my microwave my oven and my hob and the kitchen area itself is all nicely contained and everything is to hand and where i need it to be and that goes Back to another thing then that I thought I definitely wanted a caravan with a layout where I had my defined areas. So in my last caravan, I kind of had bits everywhere. So because the bedroom bit wasn't that big, I would then have clothes up at the front area in what was like the living area, if you like. And it was all a bit, bit mismatched and ideal for holidaying. But I thought, for me, because I like everything in its place, I wanted um, a caravan <laughs> with designated areas, if you like. So this caravan, I have my lounge, I have my kitchen, I have my bedroom, I have my bathroom and everything to do with like my, my bedroom, my clothes are all in one place, all my bathroom's just in one place. So that keeps my mind nice and tidy because everything is where it needs to be. So yeah, my kitchen was important. This kitchen absolutely ticks all the boxes there. Bedroom, I definitely wanted a fixed bed. I did not want to have to keep making my bed up every night. And I also wanted a bed that I could get all the way around. I didn't want it into a corner. Like in my last caravan, it was actually a dinette that I made up into the bed and left it up all the time. So you just opened the door, climbed into the bed, and you were just surrounded by a wall on your other three sides. And when you pulled the door across, so you're basically sleeping in a box. Whereas this one has got a transverse island bed. So 
I can get all the way around if I need to. If there ever was two people in the bed, <laughs> you would, you know, you, you are not going to have to be climbing over each other. So yeah, my bedroom ticks all the boxes there as well. And it's lovely because of an evening when the door is pulled over into the lounge area, you do feel kind of like you're in a nice little hotel room. It's very cosy and it feels like a bedroom and you're not then looking back up the caravan to the kitchen and the living area. Now, the one thing I didn't really have high up on my list, however, now after getting it in this caravan, it is an absolute game changer for me, was the bathroom facilities. Now, in my old caravan, I just basically had the toilet and a little sink. I took the shower out because it was neither use nor ornament. I didn't need it on the seasonal pitch because we have a shower block and I never, ever intended on taking that caravan off the pitch. Um, off the site, seasonal site, I should say, to go touring with it over winter. So I just needed the, the sink and the toilet. So with that in mind, when I was looking at vans, new ones, I didn't really pay much attention to the bathrooms. I just thought, yeah, if it's got a sink and a toilet and a shower, I, you know, they, they all come with showers now anyway, I'm happy with that. However, I absolutely love my bathroom in this caravan and the shower, which I was, I'm never going to use it. I absolutely have found it a game changer, especially now as it were coming into winter and it's dark at night. So if I've been out on a good walk, I'll come back, I'll make my tea and I think I've got to go over to the showers and it's cold and it's dark and the showers aren't particularly, although the showers themselves are hot, the room isn't that warm and it's just lovely. I'm finally getting in that frame of mind that when I'm sat here and thinking, oh, I've got to go over, I think, I've got a shower. Why don't I just use it? And it is absolutely wonderful. It is better than my shower at home. Yes, you have to be mindful of, because I'm only on aqua rolls for my water supply, I'm not on a constant water supply, that you are going to use a lot of water in the shower if you were in it, the, the amount of time you're in it at home. So I'm mindful of that. I've got that down to a fine art. I literally can have the water running for like four minutes, if that, and I'm all showered and everything done and I'm in a nice warm caravan. So yeah, the shower, the bathroom facilities really should have been a bit higher up there. They weren't, but now I'm so glad I've got them. Now, I know this is a big jump from the caravan that I had and it has been quite an investment to buy it. However, this is going to be my home. So I wanted to get the caravan that as soon as I walked in this one, I knew I could live in this caravan. My son was with me and he actually seen the caravan first and he was calling me mum you're gonna absolutely love this and he says the same he could quite easily live in this caravan so yes yeah, spending that little bit extra was definitely worth it because i will hopefully have this caravan now for the rest of my life because there is no reason i would need to to change the caravan and accommodate more people in it if i need to if my girls want to come we can easily make up the front into the double bed. If I have the awning, I can have a sleeping pod in there. So it kind of, it's going to suit everything that I will need it to, to suit in, in later years, if you like. If there was one thing I could change about the caravan, now it's not a biggie, but funnily enough, it was a biggie when I was going viewing. I said the caravan must have a split barn door because obviously I've got pets. Anybody with pets will know that split door is invaluable if you have a dog and you want to keep the dog in whilst you nip outside or vice versa, keep the dog out whilst you're doing something inside. This caravan unfortunately does not have the split barn door, but it was a sacrifice I was willing to make to get the perfect layout for me. Now in the future, I have spoken to somebody and I could actually have the door swapped 
if I wanted to. So that might be a little bit of an investment I make in the future with the caravan. It's not a cheap thing to do, but it might be worth me doing it. As I say, I've only had the caravan for just over two months at the moment. I've kind of managed with it. It has been a bit of a pain at times, but I think in the future, I could well swap it over. And I think it would be worth paying the money to do that. But that's just my personal choice that I would prefer to have that barn door. Everything else, I cannot fault whatsoever with it. Anyway, I'm going to give you a quick tour around now and I'd be very interested to know your opinions. Um, could you live in a caravan like this? Um, is there anything else that you personally think you would need? Are you thinking about doing it and this has been a little bit of an insight for you? Please just drop me a comment below and I will try and answer any questions I can or give you any little bits of advice or tips I can or if you have any for me please do the same right we'll get on with this little tour here's the living area so as you see these two make up into a decent sized double bed there's plenty of storage under this one and you can also access under there from the locker outside under this one you can only use the front bit for storage because the heating system is under the top of that one so that is the place to sit because that is the warmest spot in the caravan <laughs> and then in the bottom cupboard here is all my water system for draining all the pipes down all the pipe works in there so you can't use that for storage but you've got your two drawers here now this falls out makes up into a handy little table. The back here I've got my two USBs, there's also the um, 12 volt socket and my two plug sockets and then I've got the storage up here, plenty of storage at the top there, lovely big skylight on the roof and at the front there. There's also a music system in that one which there are two speakers in the oh they're there <laughs> forgot where they were two speakers in the front and there's also two speakers in the bathroom um i've also got a table that i can put up for eating on if there was more than just me i've not actually used that yet all of the windows have got the thermal blinds or the fly screens and obviously the curtains as well now in this caravan they have gone very extreme with the lights as i will now <laughs> give you a quick demonstration of the amount of lights in the living area all right i've tried to make it as dark as possible so there are these little lights the reading light so we've got four of these and one there so we've got your four reading lights there is also the two little side lights there is also all of these overhead lights as well now these are really handy because the way they're positioned and they're the same throughout the caravan every cupboard has got lights above it so that when you go into your cupboards everything's illuminated which is really really handy so kitchen itself got plenty of storage so you've got your two cupboards here so on the bottom you've got your pull out trays which are ideal because you can get to everything same in that one that's a pull out rack there's the dish draining board is stored in there and you've got your two drawers a uh, little cutlery one there they're all soft closing which is good there's the three gas hob and a hot electric hot plate uh grill oven we all know what an oven's like microwave and there's also an automatic extractor that comes on when you've got your gas hob on 
Now, socket wise, there's only actually two sockets, but I find that's absolutely fine for me anyway. And you like switches, and then you've got this extra little lift up bit here, which is quite handy when you're preparing meals. Lighting in the kitchen area, you've got these overhead ones. You've also got the nice little backlights behind the backsplash there, and also this light under the cupboard. Now on the other side where I keep my TV, all the aerials and sockets are behind there. So that size TV just fits on perfectly. Not too big, not too small. There's more storage by the door, fridge compartment and an okay size freezer just for me. More storage above and more storage below. And obviously more light in this side which that's nice of an evening and it lights up above the fridge freezer there so on this side is the aldi heating system controller and also the swift command control center which i can also operate remotely from my phone so if i was out on a walk and i wanted to get back and have the heating on i can operate it via my phone a bit like it, your, your smart home system, if you like. So that's quite handy to have. I've also got the carbon monoxide um, detector here and my smoke alarm as well. Also got the um, ceiling fan up there. So obviously that either sucks the air out or you can bring the air in, which is quite good for the warmer days. So into the bedroom area, the transverse island bed. So plenty of room for getting all the way around it. There's one of the radiators I mentioned earlier and there's another one behind the bed. Now to make the bed up really simple, you just pull it out at the bottom here and then climb onto it. There's a piece of foam here which is like an infill and you just push that down and then you have got a double bed full-size double bed the only thing that is missing are the two corners but it's not a biggie so there's storage in the bedroom there's the two overbed lockers which are a good size and then you've got the two wardrobes and storage below the wardrobes as well you can lift the bed up as well so there's loads of storage under the bed and that is also accessed from a locker point outside as well and a lovely big skylight in the roof there. On this side, you've got more storage on this vanity unit here. There's a mirrored cupboard there, and then you've got cupboards below, and you can also put your TV on here because there are sockets and an aerial point. And then you've got plenty of lighting as well. So I'll give you a quick look at the lighting in here. So over on this side, you've got your switch for your vanity area and also the ceiling lights all round so they're over the window and also over the bed area and then over the bed you've also got the two reading lights so of an evening obviously it's daylight now so you have got the light coming through there a bit it is actually a very cozy place to sleep and wake up to now into the bathroom so it's the thetford cassette toilet which are pretty standard heated shower rail there there's the two speakers for the heating system plenty of storage in the bathroom and then another cupboard down there which keep all my cleaning stuff so you've got your vanity mirror and basin. I did put these two shelves in because I thought that wall was quite bare. So they're, they're added by more. And then good size shower. As you can see, it's quite a decent size. So I'm just under 5'7". So there's plenty of head height, plenty of room for showering. does the job perfectly so the lighting in the bathroom you've got the ones over the sink 
and then the shower itself also has its own lighting system. On the outside is the toilet compartment door to empty it, to fill up the flusher and then over here you've got the electric battery compartment, water inlet points and also an outside shower and round at the front the gas locker compartment so I can get two bottles in there currently only got one but I will be getting another one for next season and then this side I have to excuse the floor because obviously the awning has been taken down I've got the gas barbecue point the outside locker that goes under the front um, seating area I've also got my outdoor plug socket which is handy for the awning and then there is also the other compartment which goes under the bed so that's the side of the caravan round the back not much to see just got a bike rack on the back of it and that concludes my caravan tour i hope you've enjoyed having a look around my soon to be permanent home on wheels Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support, all your comments, and I will see you all again soon. Bye for now.